Hey everyone, so in today's video, we're going to go over how vegan diets increase risk of fractures by a whopping 43%. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go over the study. Okay, so this is the link of the study. Let's uh, open that. Vegans, vegetarians, and pescatarians may be at a higher risk of bone fractures than meat, meat eaters. And let me pull up my notes. So the findings show that there was increased fractures in non-meat eaters, and that was partially explained by protein and calcium intake in addition to BMI. However, even when controlling for those factors, there continued to be higher risk of fractures in vegans. So... For example, the vegans may have consumed adequate amounts of calcium, but many plant-based sources of calcium like spinach are not as bioavailable as dairy. And we see this not just with calcium, we see this with almost every vitamin, mineral, nutrient. When it's plant-based, it doesn't really get absorbed and assimilated into the human body the same way as if it were animal-based. Protein quality is another example. Vegans may have consumed an adequate amount of plant proteins, but the amino acid ratio does not support resorption and remodeling in the bone as well as the amino acid ratio in, in, in animal proteins. Um, and so I'm going to pause here and go back to the original article. Where is it? So you can see here, you had a 43% high risk of fractures anywhere in the body, uh, as well as increased risk of specifically the hips, legs, and vertebrae fractures. Uh, and that was according to a study published in the Open Access Journal, uh, BMC Medicine. Vegetarians and people who ate fish but not meat had a higher risk of hip fractures. So even if you ate fish, but if you're not eating actual red meat, you're still having a higher risk of fracture, especially of the hip compared to people who ate meat. However, the risk of fractures were partly reduced once a BMI, calcium, and dietary protein intake were taken into account. Just a little bit less um, of an effect, but still, even when you control for those factors, you still have overall high risk of fractures if you're eating more plants as opposed to animals. And yeah, so this was, this is the first comprehensive study on the risks of both total and site-specific fractures of, in people of different diet groups. We found that vegans had a higher risk of total fractures, which resulted in close to 20 more cases per 1,000 people over a 10-year period compared to people who ate meat. The biggest differences were for hip fractures, where the risk in vegans was, so the hip fracture risk in vegans was 2.3 times higher than in people who ate meat, equivalent to 15 more cases per 1,000 people over 10 years. So this all came from um, a team of researchers at the universities of Oxford and Br Bristol, UK. And they analyzed data from nearly 55,000 people in the EPIC Oxford study. Um, and that was a study that was, the data was collected um, uh, and uh, they were recruited, the initial participants were recruited between the years of 1993 and 2001. Yeah. Now, moving on to my notes. Despite this, um, Hans, let me show you who Hans is. Actually, forget that. Despite that, um, I think Hans is a, the dietitian that they spoke with to come up with this article. Yeah, that was from a, a different uh, a different article that was also describing the same study. Um, and they still are recommending like make sure you get a good balance of fresh produce and potentially some fortified products, including soy milk, almond milk, or cashew milk, which are now mostly all fortified with calcium and vitamin D and other important nutrients. And so this just goes to show, I think she was a dietitian. They asked her opinion about this and she's still recommending <laughs> basically the plant-based despite the existence of um, this data. Um, when you're getting fortified, um, plant milks that are fortified with calcium, 
the kind of calcium that they use to fortify it is the worst type of calcium that's been linked to increased risk of heart disease. So yeah, on paper, it, it boosts the calcium content, but in reality, it does not improve your health in any way, shape, or form. Not only that, every single one of those soy milks that she recommended have emulsifiers, whether that's carrageenan, xanthan gum, gum arabica, et cetera. They, these are all the worst things that you can consume on a regular basis. All emulsifiers eventually lead to leaky gut, which is the root cause of all autoimmune diseases, and which is why almost everybody, when they hit 50 or 60, they start developing autoimmune symptoms, whether it's arthritis or multiple sclerosis or all kinds of stuff. And eventually, even at an older age, the rate goes up, right? And then she continues to say, I don't see, she's, if I remember correctly, she was um, a vegan dietitian that they asked her opinion on this topic. Um, and she says, I don't see that there are drawbacks to being a vegan, just challenges. Um, the vegan needs to be strategic about planning out the diet to ensure adequate intake of certain key nutrients, such as vitamin B12, iron, calcium, and zinc. We know that there are many health benefits to being a vegan, really. Vegans typically have a healthier body weight. Yeah, because of malnutrition, have lower cholesterol levels, exactly the opposite of what you want. The lower your cholesterol level, the more likely you're going to die sooner than somebody with a higher LDL and total cholesterol levels. We'll do more videos on that. And supposedly, as she's saying, that vegans have a lower risk for many cancers, heart disease, and diabetes compared to whom? Compared to people who are eating a standard American diet, because those are the only studies that we have in nutrition. It's like 99.99999% of studies in nutrition are comparing people who are completely out of shape, eating a standard American diet, not caring whatsoever about overall health, not exercising, probably smoking, drinking alcohol, all that kind of stuff. And then they get them and they compare them to people who are more health conscious. Who are the people that are health conscious? They're just following the guidelines. They follow what people and dietitians say are, is healthy, which is, you know, whole grains, low fat, exercise, don't smoke. So overall, they're living a healthier lifestyle just because they're not abusing their bodies in that way. Probably not smoking, you know? Yeah, of course they're going to, I mean, with all the stuff that they're doing, they better have a slightly lower risk of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. But what happens when you compare that group to somebody who's eating a species-specific diet or the carnivore diet. No one's bothering to do those studies. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. And stop the recording.